Uh, it's uh, it's Anheim. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, first introduce uh, Professor Harada. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Smash Talk. Uh, I'm Shifeng from Beijing University of Chemical Technology. It's my great honor to be the chair of the second Smash Talk given by Professor Harada from Osaka University. Smash Lecture are a uh, a senior online lecture hosted by the editorial team of the journal Supermolecular Materials. Supermolecular super Materials provide a platform for the uh, innovative research of supermolecular science and material science. Uh, our journal published high quality original research results related to supermolecular science and functional materials. The SMAT talk is usually arranged on Friday afternoon or evening, and the speakers will be the famous scientists uh, in supermolecular science or the authors who publish on the Journal of Supermolecular Materials. Uh, it's our great uh, pleasure to invite it Professor Harada from Osaka University in Japan to deliver the second SMAT talk. He is a worldwide famous supermolecular scientist. He is the first researcher who works on the interaction between the polymer chain and the uh, cyclotex chain. The title of Professor Harada's talk is uh, Cyclotex Chain Based Supermolecular Materials. Let's welcome Professor Harada and the online. Stage is used, please. Okay, thank you very much, Frank, for kind introduction and for giving me an opportunity to talk about our recent work. The title of my talk today is the Cyclodestrin uh, based supermolecular materials. Okay, over the past some decades, the much attention has been focused on the molecular recognition also gets chemistry and the supramolecular uh, chemistry. Uh, cyclic molecules have been extensively used as host molecules, uh, such as uh, uh, crown ethers, uh, cyclophanes, uh, cucurbitulils. However, in these cases, uh, their guests have been limited to small molecules and simple ions. In contrast, in biological systems, uh, such as uh, enzyme substrate and antigen antibodies and the DNA RNA systems, macromolecular recognition, recognition of macromolecules by other molecules plays an important role in maintaining life. In addition, the formation of supramolecular polymers such as microtubules, microfilaments, and the cells is of great importance for the construction of the biological architectures and for achieving biological functions. We are interested in realizing uh, such macromolecular recognition using simple artificial systems. So we chose the cyclodextrin as a cyclic component to study the macromolecular recognition of cyclodestrins, as you may know, cyclic molecules consisting of six to eight glucose units. Uh, they are called alpha, beta, and the gamma cyclodestrin, respectively. A large number of inclusion complexes of cyclodestrins with uh, low molecular weight compounds, uh, small molecules, and simple ions have been prepared and characterized. However, there were few on the complex formation of cyclodestrins with the polymers when we started our project. So we have studied interaction of cyclodestrins with the various polymers. And we found that the cyclodestrins form inclusion complexes with some polymers with high selectivity. For example, when a cyclodestrin and Polymers are mixed in water, as is shown here. Alpha cyclodestrin, the smallest one, 
form complexes with polyethylene glycol, a simple thin polymer, but not with uh, polypropylene glycol, which has a methyl group on the polyethylene glycol chain. In contrast, larger, better cyclodesy formed complexes with the polypropylene glycol right here, but not with the polyethylene glycol. Very different. What happened? Uh, there are some possibilities. Polymers include uh, cyclodexes, or cyclodexes include the polymers. Do you have any ideas to prove the structures of the complexes? Please think it. So, oh, this is the result on the complex formation of cyclodexins with some polymers, including the polyethylene glycol and the polypropylene glycol, as I mentioned before, that the alpha cyclodexin formed the complex in the polyethylene glycol, uh, the beta cyclodexin formed the complex in the polypropylene glycol, as I mentioned before. Polymethyl vinyl ether is thick. I mean, the cross-sectional area is larger than polypropylene glycol. Although the both polymers have the same composition, C3, H6, and O1. Only the difference is the position of oxygen right here. The polymethyl glycol has the oxygen uh, in the side chain, and the polypropylene glycol has the oxygen on the main chain. So the uh, polymethyl vanity is, uh, is thicker. There are larger cross-sectional areas right here. In this case, uh, the largest gamma cyclodestrins only form the complex with the polymethyl vanity ether here. So there is a good correlation between the cross-sectional areas of these polymers with the sizes of cyclodestrin cavities. In addition, uh, later, we found that the cyclodexin form complexes with not only the hydrophilic polymers, but the hydrophobic polymers uh, with high selectivity as well. Alpha cyclodexin gives uh, complexes to the polyethylene, and the beta cyclodexin form complexes only with the, uh, the beta cyclodexin here. And then the gamma cyclodexin forms complexes with the polyisobutyrate in high units right here. So there is a good correlation between the sizes of cyclodexins and uh, cross-sectional areas of these polymers. Again, here as well. Uh, the, so what do you think about that? OK. Uh, these are the just uh, the molecular models of alpha cyclodexin and the polyethylene glycol chain right here, the side view. The polyethylene glycol chain fits well in the alpha cyclodestrin cavity as shown here. And then, when you mix the alpha cyclodestrin, the polyethylene glycol, in any ratio, I mean, even if the excess amount of cyclodestrin or excess amount of polyethylene glycol is used, but uh, in both cases, the products are the same. Two ethylene glycol units are bound to a single alpha cyclodextrin. Very unique. What happened? OK. The length of the two ethylene glycol units is 0 0.66 nanometer, which corresponds to the depth of the alpha cyclodextrin cavity. Uh, this is the side view of the alpha cyclodextrin cavity. So you can. Imagine. But in addition, we found that the alpha cyclodextrin did not form complexes of the polyethylene glycol chain with the bulky substituent at the both ends here. And alpha cyclodextrin did not form complexes with the large ring polyethylene glycol ring polymer. But alpha cyclodextrin form complexes with the polyethylene glycol polymer chain with bulky group, uh, uh, without bulky end groups right here, or polymer chain with bulky group at one end, but uh, without the bulky groups at the other end from the complexes. These results indicate that small end groups are required for the complex formation. 
cycle distance threads from the polymer chain ends. Okay. So finally, this is the result on an X-ray study of a single crystal of the inclusion complex of alpha cycle density with polyethylene glycol. In this case, uh, we use hexaethylene glycol as part of the polyethylene glycol. Our polyethylene glycol chain, ethylene glycol chain is included in the tunnel formed by alpha cycle density. Two ethylene glycol units are included in a single alpha cycle density cavity. Okay, this is the result of an X-ray study of a single crystal of an inclusion complex of beta cycle extreme with polypropylene glycol. So in this case, the uh, gain polymer chain is included in a tunnel formed by cyclotextrins. Okay, and again, this is a side view of an X-ray study of a single crystal of an inclusion complex of alpha cycle so with the polyethylene uh, glycol cross-sectional uh, view. Ethylene glycol chain, this is shown in blue, is included in a tunnel formed by cyclodexins. This is a consequence that many cyclodexins threaded from the end group of the polymer chain and moved along the polymer chain. Uh, we have prepared uh, polyrotoxin and the tubular polymers from the complexes. I'm going to talk about this later. Okay, this is uh, just an amination the mechanism of the formation of the shoot polyrotoxins and the polyrotoxins. Many cyclodesins are found in the groups of the polymer chain and threaded from the end groups and moved along the polymer chain. And the groups are kept by bulky groups. In this case, we use 2,4-dinitrofluorobenzene as a stopping agent. We have obtained the polyrotoxins having hundreds of cyclodesins that are trapped in a polymer chain. And the next, the neighboring cycle, this is a bound by the short binding agent. In this case, we use ethylhydrin as the binding agent here. But at this stage, the polymer chain is still in the cavity. In order to remove the polymer chain, we have cut out the bulky substitutes at the both ends. Accordingly, the polymer chain is threading out. Eventually, the, we have obtained the tubular polymers. Molecular tubers here with a diameter of less than one nanometer. Okay, here this is the scheme of the formation of the polyrotoxins. Polyrotoxin is a very unique molecule because the cyclodes rings have some freedom. So polyrotoxins are now being studied for the drug delivery system and for development of some new materials. Uh, this is a textbook of uh, the general chemistry textbook uh, used in the United States of America. Uh, these uh, polyrotoxin the molecular tubes are uh, introduced. So polyrotoxin has an ability to disperse the stress put on the materials so that the materials become tough and unbreakable. What happened after 20 years from the discovery? Okay, here. Uh, this is the homepage of some car maker in Japan some years ago. The company announced a unique self healable iPhone case. The outer paint of this uh, case is made from the polyrotoxane. When damage occurs to the coating in the form of a fine scratch, the chemical structure is able to react to change back to its original shape and fill the gap healing the blemish. Polyrotoxin were used for the cell phones and the uh, speakers and actuators and the reason it used uh, for the golf balls by Tokyo University Professor Ito and the Venture Company. In this case, the physical self-healing, when you apply the uh, force from the, uh, the outside, the, the Surface uh, has some bump here, but when you remove the uh, force, the surface is uh, uh, going back to the original shape because the cyclic ring moves back to the original position. In this case, uh, precisely saying this is a physical sort of healing, 
use of kind of elastic behavior. Okay. So then recently the polyrotaxis have been used for the impact project right here in Japan to make a concept car. Uh, polyrotaxis are used for the body, shock absorbers, and the wheels are here. And now starting for the application for organic glasses and the battery and the coatings. But in this case, uh, once the chemical bonds are broken, the damage cannot be healed. Then how to heal the damage occurred by the breakage of the chemical bonds? Do you have any ideas? Okay, I'm uh, going to talk about this later. Okay, this is a gallery of our previous work on cyclotexin and the polymers up until the 2010. We started our work on the preparation of polyrotoxins, as uh, mentioned before. And then we have prepared the tubular polymers and also uh, the uh, molecular abacus from the polyrotoxin. And we have studied the dynamic aspects of the polyrotoxins. I mean, the relative movement of the cyclotex ring along the polymer chain using some uh, probe molecules. We have a prepared molecular shuttle, uh, kind of uh, uh, such molecular shuttle and electro trap, actually here. Uh, and also, we have studied unidirectional movement and unidirectional threading of the cyclotex ring along the polymer chain. When the gas spots are covalently attached to the cyclotex ring, they form the uh, supermolecular oligomers and the polymers, linear one, cyclic one, and alternate polymers right here. Cyclotex are found to be polymerization catalysts if I have uh, some time, uh, I'm going to talk about this uh, the uh, final uh, time, this uh, uh, talk. Today, I'd like to focus my talk on the side chain recognition. Okay, the micromolecular recognition may be classified as main chain recognition, side chain recognition, and end group recognition. Main chain recognition involves formation of the polyrotoxins, as I mentioned before. And the uh, side chain recognition is similar to that of the proteins and the DNA. And the group recognition should result in the formation of a supramolecular polymers in narrow sense. So I'd like to show you the, some example of the formation of the supramolecular ligamers in the polymers by the end group recognition um, with the host gas interaction here. Uh, linear ones right here, host gas, and the uh, cyclic one right here, and the cyclic daisy chains, as I'm going to talk about this later, and the uh, helical one, helical one, and uh, alternate copolymers right here. And in this case, supermolecular polymers are able to stretch and shrink by external stimuli. In this case, by light. Today, I'd like to talk about the use of side chain recognition by host guest interaction. So, before that, uh, while we have been studying molecular recognition by various techniques, I have got a simple question in my mind whether we can see molecular recognition by our own eyes in the real world. I would like to raise a question. Can we see the molecular recognition? There are some hints in my previous talk. I believe that you should answer yes. Then how? How to observe the molecular recognition in our, by our own eyes in real world? Okay. For small molecules, you can see. Recording in progress. You can use X-ray, NMR, AFM, and STM, and the TEM. For large molecules, there are some other methods, including measurements of the viscosity and the light scattering. But all these methods involve indirect ones. Magnification of the image of each molecule 
or measurements of accompanying physical changes. If we can use much larger molecules, you can see molecular recognition by your own eyes in our real world. However, even supramolecular polymers are too small to see. Macroscopically impossible. And how? How do you say molecular recognition? Do you have any ideas? Please think about this in a moment. <laughs> okay. So I think that the gel, chemical gel in this case, is a giant molecule linked to macromolecules by short cross-linking agents right here. So single molecule. I chose polyacrylamide gel as a scaffold because polyacrylamide gel has no interaction with the DNA, RNA, and proteins, as shown by the fact that they are used as a base for the electrophoresis. Of course, the gel has no interaction with the polysaccharides, including saccharidase. No small molecules, as exemplified, that they are used for the gel chromatography. So, we made the host gel and the gas gel separately. We added the cyclodesrin as a host part in the gel by copolymerization of a cyclodesrin monomer, very small amount, and a large amount of acrylamide monomer and the acrylamide, the very short, a small amount. We have prepared, uh, we have obtained host gels containing alpha cyclodesrin, beta, gamma cyclodesrin, respiratory. We have prepared the guest gels, guest gels, without the host and the uh, host gels, uh, without host, They're containing adamantan, adamantan is a cage like molecule and N-butyl, tashibutyl group, and also the, some alkyl groups. By the same way, the copolymerization of this uh, guest monomer, acrylamide and bisacrylamide. Of course, blank gels. Uh, without host or gas do not bind each other, host gels do not bind each other. The gas gels do not bind uh, each other on the, at all. So, in this case, both gels are stained colored by water soluble dyes when the beta cyclic is a host gel, shown that was brought in contact to the piece of uh, adamantan gel. The host gel adheres firmly to the gas gel shown in the slide. Here? <laughs> okay. So, the interaction is between the beta cyclic gel and the automata gel is so strong that it was difficult to separate them from the gel assembly using examples of uh, tweezers right here. This is an unexpected result. So, we have decided to use a machine. When the bond gel containing uh, gas gel in the host gel was pulled from the both sides using a creep meter in this side. Green part is the adamantan gel, and the pink part is the uh, beta cyclization gel. Both gels have been just conducted right here, and the both gel assembly is uh, pulled from the both ends, and the gel assembly, okay, broke, that work. Now, but when you Take a closer look at this gel. There remains uh, this one, the uh, green part on the pink gel. One of the gel pieces, in this case, the mountain green part broke without damaging the uh, contact interface, without damaging right here, uh, the contact interface. In spite of the fact that gels are bound only by non covalent host gas interaction. That the green part was made of the covalent bond, strong covalent bond. Okay, what happened? So, host gel and the gas gel adhere strongly only by the host gas interaction. There are no other interaction at all. Uh, this is the first example of a molecular recognition event that has been used to assemble large objects. Okay, when 
Pieces of metal cycles that they say jars at the mountain gels are mixed and shaken in water. Uh, metal cycles they say that the mountain gels stack each other to form assembly. They form dimers, trimers, hexamers, and finally they form uh, the single assembly. When we take a closer look at this assembly, pieces of metal cycles they say gels stack only with a bit of uh, the mountain gel, green one. So these observations indicate the molecular recognition plays an important role not only on the molecular level, but also on the microscopic level. When the uh, gel assembly was picked out, picked up by the tweezers, gel assembly formed the line with the host guess, host guess, uh, green, red, green, red, altering pattern. This is a highlight article in Nature uh, published some years ago as a molecular matchmaking here. So I'd like to show you how strong the interaction is. This is the gel assembly of the between the beta cycles in gel and then the mountain gel. The gel was dried overnight and set in the strings having a dumbbell with one kilogram weight right here. And the string you see here. The size is about the three millimeter cube. You know, here is a pulley. When the string is pulled, when he tries to pull the string, you can lift up the one kilogram dumbbell without the difficulty. No trouble at all. The gel is intact. Uh, but you can use two kilogram dumbbell without the difficulty. However, when you use three kilogram dumbbell, the gel broke, but the interface has no damage. Interactions are so strong. Okay, here. So let me show you the selectivity. Well, the pieces of alpha cyclodesin gel blue, little bit of cyclodesin gel yellow, uh, red, and a little bit of gel yellow, and a detachable to gel shown in green were mixed and shaken in water. Blue alpha cyclodesin gel. Bound only to N-butyl yellow gel and the beta cycle saying uh, red gel stack only to the uh, green touchable to gel. E? To give you alternating the check pattern, these results clearly indicate uh, that uh, host gel recognize the corresponding guest gel through host guest interaction to form microscopic structures. So it takes time, so I have to stop from here. This is the final state. Blue alpha cycle distant gels binds only to the uh, n uh, yellow gels, and the red beta cycle gels bind only to uh, green touching to gel. There are no cross reactions and no mistakes at all. Okay, but surprisingly, okay, these are the host yes, interaction modes. The stream and butyl group is well in the uh, small alpha cycles in cavity, and the bulky tasha group fits well in the larger beta cycles in cavity. Here, uh, this system can be applied to differentiate the microscopic materials through molecular recognition of the various guest parts. Here, okay, here. The beta cyclodesin ring on the host gels includes the attachable group of the guest gel selectively. The complex formation works cooperatively to give an assembly. The wider the contact air surface, the more stable the binding is. So we are able to obtain regular pattern. Regular pattern. Okay, here. So when we use gels with the same shape and similar sizes prepared using a mold. We could obtain much more regular pattern shown here, like crystallization. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. Okay, those working with a molecular system use well-defined reversible interactions to generate the assembled structures, such as well-defined hydrogen bonds, donor acceptable bond, and the ligand metal bonds. 
those who work with microscopic system typically use microscopic interactions, capillary forces, electrostatics, and the magnetics to direct assembly uh, structures, mainly by white sides of the hover here. In our case, large objects self-assemble by molecular recognition. This is the first example. Okay, in order to design materials by host gas interactions, there are some approaches, some approaches. When a gas polymer and the host polymers are mixed in the water, they give uh, network and then the gel. Another approach is, is the use of the complex of the uh, host polymer in the gas monomer. The complex becomes the uh, cross-linking part to give a network structure and then supermolecular hydrogels. And here, the similar structures of the, the uh, before. These gels show the self-healing ability when they got damaged because of the gel was formed by reversible bonds. Reversible bonds. This is an important property of non-covalent interactions. Okay, I'd like to show you some example. This is the polyacrylic acid. Beta this was attached to a part of the polymer chain, as shown here. Oh, this is a soluble in the water. Then the ferrocene group, oh, this is the gas group, was attached to this uh, another polyacrylic acid polymer it's here in a two or three mole percent. This is also soluble in the water. When the both solutions were mixed, they form a gel. As you can imagine, cyclodesin includes ferrocene in the cavity to give a cross path. This gel, gel is uh, quite interesting because when the gel was cut in half by knife, but uh, both gel pieces are brought in contact at the cut end right here, the both gel pieces are bound again to give a single uh, gel. Next day, there are cutting surface and the, the, the interface disappeared. We cannot see the uh, interface. And the gel strength recovers almost uh, 85%. And then the cut ends are treated with oxidizing agents. The both gel pieces could not bind again at all because the ferrocene was oxidized, the ferrocenium cation right here. So uh, cation could not be included in the cyclodexal ring. So the uh, both uh, gel pieces could not bind again. But when the surface was treated by the reducing agent, the cation, ferrocenium cation, was reduced to the neutral ferrocene. So in this case, uh, the ferrocene was included in the cyclodexal ring. So the both gel pieces can bind again. So uh, we can control the sort of healing system by redox reactions. Okay, here, this is just an animation of the self healing process. When the gel was cut in half by knife, most the guess, interaction uh, were broken. But the gel pieces are brought in contact. The uh, host and the guests are recovered. By the gain, so gels adhere to give a single gel by the formation of the inclusion complex again here. Well, let me show you a, a specific example. Adamantium monomer right here is insoluble water, but the monomer was solubilized in water by cyclodexin monomer. Adamantium monomer was included in the cyclodexin cavity and uh, uh, to give a soluble complex. This is a soluble in water. Uh, the uh, host monomer to get smaller. So the copolymerization of the complex right here with a large amount of dacrylic right here. So in this case, uh, the copolymerization of the complex dacrylate gave a gel, uh, such kind of 
white opaque gel. Okay? So in this case, the gel was made only by the host guest interactions, host guest interactions right here. So when the gel was cut by knife, the uh, host guest interactions were broken, broken right here. But when the gel pieces were brought in contact, the gel pieces that they hear each other uh, to give a single gel that right here, in this case, the gel strength recovered 99%, over 90-90%. Almost a perfect sort of healing has been achieved. So this is the original, the, the, no different from the original gel here. When the cycle and the gas content was increased to more percent here, transparent, clear gel was obtained. Interestingly, the gel can stretch and shrink reversibly many times. And this is a uh, uh, strength stress curve. It seems there remains some uh, strain here, but uh, this strain disappears in a couple of hours. We don't know how, why. Then we did the tensile test, tensile test, rupture test of the host gel, host guest gel, and also the usual covalent gel. Polyacrylamide gel, the famous uh, just the polymer gel. This covalent gel is a very weak gel. Did not stretch at all and easily broke. Very small here. In contrast, the supramolecular gel can extend longer than the fourteen hundred percent right here, and the stress shows more than ten times stronger. The host gas gel is more than 100 times stronger than the covalent gel, covalent gel here. In terms of the total rupture energy, integral of the uh, SS cup right here, uh, this is uh, due to the reversible host gas interaction. Here, this is a compression test. Compression test. These are covalent gels, and this is a uh, supermolecular gel. Here, you can see. Their uh, covalent gel broke easily, but the supermolecular gel showed no damage at all. Here, never damaged. Later, we found that the host gas gel did not break under a two ton press. If you put it under the car, usual car, this uh, Supermolecular gel did not break. Okay. Okay, this is a piercing test, puncture test using a cut knife blade right here. The host gas gel is so tough that the blade did not stab the gel. In addition, if gel was cut, the cut ends can bind again to give a single gel. Oh, I'm sorry that. Uh, This is usual polyacrylamide gel. I hope it's moved, <laughs> but uh, I don't know that uh, why it doesn't move. Here. I'm going to show you later, maybe. <laughs> okay, here. Oh, these super breakout materials are now commercially available and used as a organ models, such as heart models and artificial skins right here. So the behavior of the supermolecular uh, gels depends on the combination of the host and the gas. When you use gamma cyclodesin as a host and the long alkyl chain with the uh, biologian part here as a gas, the toughness maximized at water content about 40 more percent right here. Okay, uh, this is an article on the published in the Supermolecular Materials, the first uh, uh, volume maybe, okay, here. And what happened on the coating film on the hard materials? An accurate solution of the sacrifice in monomer and the gas monomer and the main monomer was sprayed on the glass plate 
when the photo initiated right here, then the mixture was sprayed uh, on the glass plate and united with the light to initiate the polymerization. After washing and drying, the thin film was obtained. The thin film was scratched by the knife blade, here shown in the black right here. But then the film was sprayed by a small amount of water. The scratch disappeared, was healed almost completely in a couple of minutes right here. Very efficient. Uh, this, uh, uh, these are the 3D laser microscopic image of the host gas film, the supermolecular film, before and after the spraying the small amount of water. The scratch in 11 micrometer depth almost completely disappeared and healed. Okay, here. Okay, next, as a stimuli responsive gas, we use the azobenzene right here, as you may know, as a gas. Alpha cyclotestin gel bound to each other uh, and the uh, azobenzene gel bound. You can imagine the host gas interaction to give an assembly. So this is an assembly. When the assembly was irradiated by UV light, trans azobenzene turned to cis. Cis azobenzene is too large for the alpha cyclotestin. So cis azobenzene is uh, kicked out from the cavity. Eventually, the assembly dissociated there immediately, as shown here. When the gel assembly was irradiated by UV light in the presence of a beta cycle, the same gel is shown red. The other benzene gel shown in yellow, this is a natural color, left other cycle gels in blue, and that switched, changed his or her mind to the beta cycle, the same gel in red, shown in red, okay? So we wonder if the uh, adhesions are limited to gel-to-gel -gel glue. To test this, we try to see uh, the gel-to-glass uh, interactions. As when it was uh, attached to a glass plate by way of a silent coupling agent, very small amount, after a cycle of the gel uh, adhered to the glass plate, Family. But when the glass plate was irradiated by UV light, of course, in this case, uh, the trans has been then to change uh, cis has been then. In this case, the alpha cyclotestin uh, gel could not adhere to the glass plate because the cis has been is uh, too large for the uh, alpha cyclotestin cavity. So, in this case, ferrocene group guess, was attached to the glass plate in a similar way, a very small amount, um, monomolecular uh, layer. When the cycle descent gels and uh, blank gels are placed on the glass plate with, with a ferrocene here, I, I will show you the, later uh, again. And acrylamide gel uh, very fast, <laughs> very fast. And uh, alpha cycle gels uh, shown in green show some resistant. Okay, the, okay. Acrylamide gel phosphor and alpha cyclotestin gel set off, but some show some resistance because the alpha cyclotestin is saying some interaction with the cyclopentadienyl part. In contrast, beta cyclotestin gel adhered to glass plate strongly. Accordingly, organic materials and inorganic materials are glued by host gas interactions. Okay, how about the binding between hard materials? In this case, we used alumina plate or the stainless steel plate. Plate was treated by ozone or plasma to give hydrogen groups. Vinyl groups are attached uh, to the hydrogen groups uh, by silane coupling reagent right here. The vinyl group, group is here. Then the cyclotestin monomer, gas monomer, and the, uh, the acrylamide monomer were co polymerized with this uh, uh, vinyl groups on the plate. So, what happened? These are the results on the tensile test of the host gas uh, glued sample and covalent glued samples. Okay, surprisingly, host gas supermolecular glue is much stronger than the covalent glues. It is a contradictor to the uh, the 
uh, usual uh, the concept. Host gas glue shows much higher stress and strain values. More uh, surprisingly, the host gas gel showed self-healing property. I mean that the supermarket glue can be used many times repeatedly. Although the covenanted glue can be used only once right here, you can use uh, the uh, host gas supermolecular glue can be used many times. We found that the hydrophobic methylated cyclase monomer are soluble in some lucky monomers. Uh, like uh, ethyl acrylate here. So cyclase monomer gas monomers can be polymerized with a liquid monomers in bulk without any solvent, without any solvent. We could obtain the polymers, elastomers, containing a small amount of host and gas without any solvents here. So these are stress strain curves for the polyethyl acrylate right here, and that with the gas. No difference. And with the host and the gas right here. The polymers showed high stress and strain values of the addition of only 0.5 more percent of the host and the gas. Supermolecular materials are so tough and very tough. Surprising. These are the how piercing tests. This is uh, polyethylene acrylate cross linked by the covalent bonds. In this case, we use butylene bis acrylate was used. The film is broke easily, but this is a uh, uh, supermolecular material, so polymer. It did not break. Very tough, very tough. Host gas polymers were also found to be able to heal automatically, automatically, only by contact. Although that the room temperature, it takes uh, 24 hours to regain stress to four, ah, 24 hours, I'm sorry, here, the green part, but it took only four hours at 80 degrees, recover stress, and the total energy 100% right here. Okay, this is a super breaker materials premier prepared using a mold. Since all host and the guest groups are coupled, there are no free and host guest groups on and in the gel. So even if the polymers are cut in half, when the both pieces are brought in contact and the cut ends, both pieces adhere to each other strongly to give a single piece. And here, okay, here. So these are supermolecular elastomers are also commercially available and are used as 3D printers, as self-healable elastomers. You can make a change instantaneously here, okay? So, I would like to spend the rest of time to talk about the molecular machines. Okay? I have been wondering how to integrate the molecular movements to microscale devices as muscles. When a polymer containing uh, cyclicine and the polymer uh, containing husband here, the gas uh, mixed in the water, they form the gel here. As you can expect and imagine, alpha seed on the polymer chain includes other group to give a uh, uh, cross-linking part. When the gel was added by UV light, the gel turned to a zone. Trans husbands changed the cis. Cis husbands was kicked out from the cavity, and then the cis husbands left alpha sacs in. This is reversible. When the gel was partially cross-linked by covalent, was right here, 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 here. Chemical cross-linked right here. In this particular case, when the gel was irradiated by UV light here, trans husbands, of course, that they changed it to cis. But in this case, uh, cis husbands left alpha cyclodesin. But the chemical cross linking part prevents the gels from changing their zone because the covalent of uh, these bonds uh, keep the gel structure here. So in fact, uh, we made such a gel on the clothes wire polyacrylamide gels. When the gel structure was irradiated, oh, do not okay. I will show you later. Should move, <laughs> but uh, these changes are able to repeat it many times. Ah, okay, here <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, 
when you run it, you have a light that uh, there are strips bend to the other side here. Okay, here. And uh, let me show you another approach uh, to make uh, macro scale machines integrating the supramolecular machines. We chose C2 daisy chain right here as a component for the molecular device. C2 daisy chains is a doubly threaded uh, road taxi, which can stretch and shrink by sliding each other, which is a luminescent of the muscle consisting myosin and actin microfilaments right here. Okay, we have designed and prepared various daisy chains containing cyclodesins. These are the daisy chains uh, containing, uh, of course, uh, cyclodesins and benzene groups right here, and the steel band group uh, right here, and the red group, and other benzene group right here. These are called the uh, uh, daisy chains right here. So we have a prepare of this compound, and other benzene group was attached to a single uh, alpha cyclodesing rim with a and the some linker groups right here, some linker group here. In this case, this molecule forms the C2 daisy chain spontaneously in water by host-gas interaction, non-covalent bonds. These are the ROISI, two-dimensional ROISI spectra of the daisy chains before and after the UV light irradiation. Before UV light irradiation, there are correlation peaks between the cyclodesin in a proton right here and uh, other benzene protons right here. These results indicate that the uh, other benzene groups are included in the uh, cyclodesin ring. But after UV light irradiation, cross peaks, these cross peaks disappear, so totally disappear. And but the new correlation peaks appear between the cyclodesin in a proton and uh, alkyl chain appeared, indicating that other than they change the cis form, so eventually the cyclodesin ring moves from the other benzene to the alkyl chain here. So oh, this is a conceptual representation for the movement of the contraction and expansion of the daisy chain. Oh, this is a similar to sarcomere other than in the muscle, myosin and the uh, and the uh, movement right here. Okay, see the daisy chains have been prepared. Many other researchers, besides our reports, Professor Savage, a uh, Nobel Prize laureate, reported the daisy chains with the coordinating bonds right here. In the same year, we published the first paper, and the Professor Easton also reported the daisy chains containing syllabin groups. And the Professor Stoddard and the Professor Graffs, also the Nobel Prize laureate, reported the daisy chains in the uh, same year, the really similar uh, design, uh, the daisy chain polymers containing crown eaters and ammonium uh, cation groups as a guest. In this case, in these cases, although the polymers can change shape, can expand and shrink by molecular uh, scale, uh, by pH change, it is difficult to move on the macroscopic scale. There are no reports on the macroscopic uh, movements which move by external stimuli here. Okay. So we prepared polymeric materials containing cyclodics and daisy chains linked by four armed polyethylene glycol chains as shown here. Polyethylene glycol chains are soft and flexible, enough to make molecular motion integrate microscopic movement of polymeric materials. When the gel, including uh, the uh, cyclodics and CD, uh, the Daisy chains here, as a benzene daisy chain, was irradiated by UV light at 350 nanometers, gel shrunk 5% uh, by weight. However, the, when the gel was irradiated by visible light, 430 nanometers, the shrunk gel 
expanded and it came back to the original shape and size right here. Okay. In contrast, that the polyethylene glycol gels without other benzene do not change the shape and the size by radiation of a UV light and the visible light right here. Okay, when the freeze dried, gel gels was divided by UV light. The gel bent as shown here. Uh, this is a flexion angle, angles as a function of the time. Only one second the radiation of the light, UV light cause a flexion angle of seven degrees. And four seconds irradiation gave 50 degrees of the flexion angle here. This is a 10,800 times faster than in water here. Please watch here, here, okay? So we prepared the topological cross-linking gels by the condensation reaction between other benzene and the cycle day string amines and the polyethylene glycol are uh, the uh, acids right here. These gels are mechanically cross-linked materials, as shown here. Okay, topological cross-linked gels. What happened? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry that it's, I'm skipped one slide here. Okay, when the dried gel was eroded with UV light, the gel bent. Well, the light quickly. In this case, the weight was lifted up by the UV light radiation shown here. But in this case, the bent samples did not go back to the original shape. So, in order to make the movement reversible, I mean, the bent sample can go back to the original shape. We have decided to use a steel bin as a photosensitive unit because a steel bin can be isobarized reversible by UV light. This is a C2 daisy chain containing stilbin. The stilbin daisy chains are incorporated in the polymer network by four armed polyethylene glycol chains, as I mentioned before. In this case, the both hydrogels, dry one and the hydrogels and the uh, transparent clear gels. This is the different from the other than the gel. When the gel strip was eroded by UV light from this uh, left hand side and the 350 nanometer gel bent towards the incident light right here. And then the gel came back to the original shape when you added it by another UV light, in this case, the 280 nanometers. Uh, when we use the uh, uh, dried sample gel, super molecules, uh, dried material, very quick. Okay. When you write it, uh, you will write uh, 280 nanometer, they bend toward east in the light. But uh, by the relation of another UV light, 280 nanometer, go back to the original shape. This changes are uh, very quick and repeated many times. Okay, here. This is the mechanism of actuation of the CD daisy channel in the dry state. When you add it to UV light, the, uh, this is a CD daisy chain. The other bits and still bits are isomerized to trans to cis and pull the uh, main chain so the gel shrank. So the, this part shrank. So the gel strip are bent towards the incident light. Okay. So we have tested the two approaches to integrate the molecular motion to macroscale devices. First, we use the gels containing the host and the gas parts. In this case, when you UV light was eroded the gel, the trans husband changed the cis home to dissociate, and the gel was expand. So when the gel strip was uh, eroded the UV light from the left hand side, there the gel strip is bent toward the other side, the other side, the right hand side. The second one, when daisy chains were incorporated into all the gel, the gel shrunk by the UV light irradiation. So when the gel strip was irradiated from the UV light from the left hand side, in this case, the gel strip bent toward 
the instant light right here, the very different the uh, the different uh, uh, direction. So we can control the direction of the movement here by the construction of the uh, movement. So the stimuli responsive phenomena are found in nature. Uh, this is the sunflowers directed to the sun by visible light. It takes some time, but although the mechanism is different, but the behaviors are similar to our findings here. Okay, uh, these are the SS curves, strain stress curves for the host guest dried gel. I mean the super molecular uh, materials before and after UV light irradiation. Before UV light irradiation, shown in the uh, black belly uh, shop here, before UV light irradiation, dry gel is uh, so hard and did not extend. However, after photo irradiation, the gel gel became soft and flexible and extended to more than 1,000% here. Very different, very different. But uh, the strength of uh, stress values are almost the same. So this big, uh, indicates that the uh, number of cross linking po points are the same. Only the distance of the host and the guest are uh, the sliding, the changed by sliding. Okay, this is a summary of our wrist work from the side chain recognition right here. Uh, those gel transition as shown here, self healing process, and microscopic self assembly. And the photo switchable, photo switchable gel assembly. Right now, we are working on the preparation of artificial muscle and the shape of memory system. So, almost the time to the one hour, but uh, if you give me some time, I'd like to talk about uh, uh, the super molecular cutters. Okay? Uh, May I? Okay, here, a uh, few minutes. Previously, I showed that the cycle is form accomplices with polyesters. Right here, we also found that the cycle is are able to form accomplices uh, cyclic acids, lactans, uh, the starting materials of the polymers, and catalyze the uh, uh, the ring opening by the cycle are here in water. Okay. We also found that the polyesters are hydrolyzed by the cyclodextrin to give a short polymer chain right here. This is similar to the hydrolysis of DNA by an enzyme named oxonuclease, as shown here. I thought that if cyclodextrin and lactan cyclic acids starting monomers are mixed without water, they might form polyesters because hydrolysis does not take place in the absence of water. So we mix the cyclodesin and lactone cyclic acid without water and heat it. We use the alphabetic gamma cyclodesin and uh, four member the link that six member lactone and uh, uh, this is a larger lactone. And uh, these uh, cyclodes uh, form complexes, uh, these uh, cyclic acids uh, selectively. And the polyesters are formed by the polymerization of lactin selectively. I'll show you, this is the mechanism of the polymerization. The monomers are included in the cyclodex ring first. And the hydrogen groups attack the or carbonic groups of the cyclic acids that they give their esters right here. And then the second monomers include the cyclic ring and they are attached to the rim. But in this case, that the polymer monomers are inserted between this growing chain. So the polymer chain is migrating the cyclodesin rim. Later, we found that this mechanism is uh, very similar to the natural enzymes. When another cyclodesin, which includes the polymer chain, was attached to the catalytic cyclodesin. Okay, here. Uh, 
And this is all link opening. Polymerization of cyclic, ah, I'm sorry, that did it here. I think it must be moved. Or cyclic acid includes the cyclic acid and the activate. Then the next, I hope it's move. <laughs> what did, it doesn't move? So, if we have time, I'd like to show you the later. So, this part is uh, similar to that uh, DNA polymerase. Uh, we call it the clump part right here. It should be like uh, donuts. The double health of DNA was encircled by this enzyme. DNA chain is elongated in the enzyme. The structure is similar to our system. Okay, here. I think that, uh, I hope that uh, I hope that uh, this movie works. Okay, so I hope. Okay, almost at the time, and so that I'd like to stop here. And if uh, we have time, I'd like to show you the another uh, movie. Okay, so oh, I'd like to stop here. So thank you for your kind attention. So thank you, Feng. Thank you very much for a wonderful talk. Uh, it's time for questions and answers. Uh, many colleagues have put have typed their questions uh, in the chart. Uh, the first question is from Wu Su. Uh, the University of Science and Technology of China. This question is, most of your jaw, Tintin, waters, it seems uh, the hydrophobic interaction is a driving force for the formation of host gas complex. However, there are few samples of the dry jaw that they do not contain water. For example, in your jet paper in 2018, uh, alpha cyclic and the uh, stribin form the dry jaw. Their host gas interaction still can be controlled by the light in the uh, dry state. What what are the drying force to control the host gas interaction in the dry jaw? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, I, I, it's just so difficult to uh, catch uh, the, what you say, but uh, I uh, imagine. I don't have I, the text, text in the chat. You see oh. the chat. Yeah. They have the question. Text. Okay. I think that uh, he asked that uh, uh, the driving force of the uh, host gas interaction in the right state, right? Yes. Okay. But in so, a dry jaw. Uh, in a dry jaw. Uh, okay. So, in water, as you may not, uh, know, uh, know that uh, this is a hydrophobic interaction or the hydrogen bond interaction. In dry states, so uh, the interaction is not, not so strong, but uh, uh, cooperation makes this uh, interaction strong. And in this case, uh, of course, that uh, it's not a hydrophobic interaction. So of course, that uh, direct interaction with the between host and the guest works. So, uh, the main thing the, uh, the host guest interaction is, uh, stems from the uh, hydrogen bond and the uh, uh, Fandia walls interactions. So, first, uh, I didn't th think that the Fandia walls uh, or forces uh, work, but uh, for the long time, but uh, 
So, the, of course, the, you may know that the van der Waals uh, interaction is a very short uh, the distance uh, interaction. But I think that the uh, inclusion complexes in a cavity between the host and the gas interaction is uh, not the pinpoint, but the many diverse forces and the, uh, the also that the uh, pointing uh, in the center of the molecule uh, interactions, forces uh, uh, functioning. So I think that the direct interactions, for example, that the Van der Waals interaction is also, and also that the uh, hydrogen bonding and the donor acceptor and the uh, dipole, dipole interactions works. I think so. Of course, that in uh, water, they uh, work uh, uh, similarly. Of course, that the uh, interaction in the water is not uh, so uh, clear right now, though, also, that uh, there are many uh, understandings of the formation of the inclusion complex of the cyclodescents with I guess polymers. First, uh, they are uh, saying that uh, found the well, so interactions are not uh, the, uh, the the force, but the uh, hydrophobic interaction is the main. But when it attracts the guest molecules in the cavity, and in the cavity, the guest molecules can fit well, and then the uh, found the well, so interactions works. And this is my a personal opinion. I didn't have the uh, clear uh, the evidence right here, but you may know that uh, in nature there are some interactions uh, between the uh, the animals and the animals and uh, some uh, on, uh, the wood or grasses. Abound by the Van der Waals interactions. This is my uh, personal opinion. Okay, <laughs> right? Yes, thank you. Uh, the the second question is: I I put it on the chart. Uh, can you see it from? Uh, Uh, Professor Harada, we have a chat uh, form here. So the audience has collected the uh, questions uh, mm -hmm. by putting them in, in the chat diagram. That is OK so here. I'll try chat. to open the uh, chat That's here. Exactly. OK. There are about four to five questions. Uh, five? OK. Yeah. Uh, which, way, which one? The last one. Last uh, one? Uh, Asked by uh, Dr. Tsongfu from mm. Beijing University of Chemical Technology. The question is, uh, I'm very interesting, interested in the microscopic supramolecular assembly of uh, jaw you showed. May I ask you a question? How to improve the precise uh, pre mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the microscopic mm -hmm. uh, self-assembly? And what's the future of the medical mm. application? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's a very interesting uh, question. So, so I also have the same question. Okay, here uh, and also that uh, uh, it is a very nice uh, question because that uh, I will try to uh, precise uh, microscopic uh, assemblages uh, as I shown before in the talk. The, when you use the gels with the same size and same shape, the uh, final assembly shows a very regular way. But uh, in nature, for example, the molecules assemble uh, and to make uh, crystals here. I hope that the microscopic assemblies uh, work such kind of uh, uh, precise uh, way, but it's uh, rather difficult to make 
such a precise uh, microscopic self assembly. Uh, but I tried sometime with that. today, I didn't show, uh, but when you use the gels in uh, part of the hard materials, are the so okay, dot to dot interactions. So in this case, that the, uh, the place of the interactions as the formation of the assemblies are much more precise than the uh, usual uh, microscopic assembly I showed before. So please try to make uh, such a uh, uh, assembly, precise assembly see here. And also that uh, you have the, uh, I'm sorry, that uh, medical applications here, and oh, okay. So, I showed in my talk that uh, uh, the artificial organ, the organ model, the, uh, this uh, one of the, it's the heart model. This is not the right now that the uh, artificial organ, but uh, we are now available in the uh, skin, the artificial skins, and it can uh, the uh, the stretch and shrink reversibly, and also that uh, when you try to uh, the uh, mm, hole, uh, make a hole, but it's not difficult. So we are now thinking about that uh, this uh, uh, hydrogels can be applied to the artificial organs or the uh, um, blood veins for the blood. You, you know that the and also that uh, our, our kidney and uh, some uh, the organs. But we have to clear the our safety regulations of something right now. And I'm expecting that uh, use of these uh, assembled structures and also that the polyrotoxins are now being studied as uh, drug delivery systems. I think that uh, this kind of uh, materials can be used for the uh, drug delivery system. I hope <laughs> this is uh, one of the, my uh, the future plan here. Uh, thank you for your good question. And uh, the third question is show uh, in the uh, chart. I think it's a very interesting question. What is the host gas polymer uh, RP aging performance? Uh, because uh, CD is easy to degrade, de uh, degrade quickly by the uh, mm. uh, emanation. <laughs> 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 Can you have it? You have it? I'm now kind of... <clears throat> the last one, the last question. Last question, okay. I'm now uh, checking that uh, the uh, chat talks. And the last one is uh, this one, what is the uh, host guest polymer? Anti-aging performance or no? <laughs> last, one. last question is that the top or the bottom? In the bottom, what is the host gas polymer anti-aging performance of psychodesin is a poly so that will uh, degrade quickly by them. Okay, I'd like to answer this question. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm interested in also that the anti-aging performance here. Polysaccharides is a uh, biodegradative 
on the materials, also the cycle resistance, uh, typical one. And the cycle resistance can be uh, for, uh, degraded uh, by the enzymes, but then the other uh, the parts, the acrylamide and some other parts are not uh, difficult to degrade by the enzymes. So uh, we have to uh, do some tricks to do so, but uh, the anti-aging performance is very important so that uh, uh, you can replace that uh, uh, organs by the artificial organs and also that some parts can be used. And also that uh, I think that uh, materials, this gel is stronger than our body, I think so. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I think that uh, I can uh, show, uh, I'd like to show the, the movies, another movies here. Right, uh, I have some time, we have some time to hear. Yeah. Here, here. So, eto, do show. I hope it moves, but it can be, uh, <laughs> it cannot move so that the uh, uh, If it moves, that uh, I'd like to show that the, how quick the uh, healing is, because that the, when you use uh, polyacamide gel, usual one, it easily broke, and also there are no uh, interaction at all. But when you use supramolecular gels, uh, the gels show some resistance for the uh, cutting, of course. But uh, when you cut their supramolecular gels by thin string, shown here, but when you complete the uh, cutting, already that uh, both gels uh, uh, adhere to each other. You can imagine that what happened. So when you cut the gel, supermarket gel, the cutting edge can mend, the cured, healed instantaneously. So oh, it is impossible to cut the gel by thin strings because the mending is so quick, so fast. As that uh, some like gel or the zones or uh, liquids, the gel can mend very quick. So if it uh, more fast, faster than it uh, uh, right now, that just cannot cut, cannot broke. You can imagine what, <laughs> what I say. So I like to look for some uh, movies uh, the, when we uh, stopped the, okay, here. Oh, I think that's uh, to move. Oh, here. You can see, you can see at the movie? Yes, we can see. Okay. Oh, this is uh, the usual covalent uh, gel. This is the supermolecular gel. When you cut the gel uh, by thin strings, the strings are already uh, the, uh, adhered. So you cannot cut <laughs> the gels by thin strings. But I mean, so when the damage occurs, the damaged part is uh, mended, cured, healed at the same time. So the, this is uh, quicker than the, uh, uh, the, our body, I think so. Do you think so? <laughs> okay. Uh, the last question is from 
Professor Anderson from Jilin University. They ask you whether the last work on artificial polymer uh, race published. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the, I published the work on uh, on the the heavy a couple of years ago, and uh, so artificial polymerase. Okay, so. Okay, I'd like to show you that uh, animation. I think uh, this works uh, the same way. Oh, okay, here. The additional polymerase with the molecular clump. This is a beta cycle, they say, and this is the gamma cycle, they say. And uh, one of the lactin is included, cyclic acids included, and they open the ring and they uh, are growing a chain and they insert it uh, between the cyclic and growing a chain. This part is the gamma cyclic We call it the clump, clump, or molecular clump, as the DNA polymerase has here. This part is very important. So, okay, here. As I showed before, the beta cycle of this thing includes the uh, uh, lactin and attached to the here, and another monomer is inserted between the end. But in this case, that the growing chain inhibits the uh, uh, next inclusion of the uh, monomer right here. So they need another uh, ring to strike, make uh, the growing chain straight. This is important. <laughs> okay, uh, here. I'd like to mention about this uh, uh, again here because that this, uh, uh, the artificial polymerase with the molecular clump can be recognized as a kind of a molecular machine because that if you uh, see this movie from the left hand side, this is side, the cyclic ring moves from the right to left hand side using a chemical energy. So this is a kind of molecular machine using chemical energy, moving the cyclic ring, move from the right to hand side, the left side, along the polymer chain. Do you understand what I say? And uh, I did want to show you here. Can you see the, uh, this is an animation? Uh, the, we did not make this one, but another group, medical group, uh, shown here DNA polymerase. This blue one is a uh, uh, crumb part. Crumb part did not have the catalytic part, but if uh, this part is not uh, uh, in the polymerase, there uh, polymerization did not occur efficiently. This part is very important. So, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the clump part is right here, the uh, such a ring shape, donut shaped uh, part. Uh, of course, uh, this is uh, uh, made by the proteins right here, and the uh, DNA the double chains right here, and then it's circled right here. The, the, uh, so the support the polymerization, this is a very similar to our system right here. Do you see what I mean? Okay, here. Okay, uh, I think that the, uh, the almost uh, uh, the, hi, the final state here. Uh, is this paper published? Oh, published in the Ange Valde de a couple of years ago. And also the, this, uh, uh, the, Artificial polymerase uh, uh, paper was uh, introduced in Nature, and also the uh, Nature uh, the hot paper, and uh, also introduced in the Chemistry World by Royal Society of Chemistry. Here, this is very interesting work. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was very surprised in the uh, more uh, here. Uh, uh, still, I'm uh, working with his here. I can attach that uh, some catalytic part, uh, the cyclic ring. 
And the、uh, most important、uh, finding is that the part of the clamp, because、uh, there was no such uh, uh, the items here was a device in the artificial system, the catalytic system in our worlds. But、uh, we found that this is a accidentally found that this cycle this ring, ring molecules can support the polymerization polymerization of the uh, uh, monomers. It、uh, works very efficiently, and it、uh, there is、uh, necessary part. Of the enzyme, I think that、uh, also the catalyst, or、well, the polymerization catalyst. I think this、uh, become it will become the usual item for the polymerization catalyst in、uh, our artificial way. Okay. <laughs> okay.、Uh, almost the time. We、mm -hmm. would like to thank Professor Harada、uh, for a wonderful talk. And uh, uh, I make an announcement that the next speaker, the next week, we we invited Professor Chi Feng, Suzhou University, will give a talk on Friday, next Friday night.、Uh, we look forward to see you again in the Smart Talk next week.、Uh, thank you,、uh, Professor Harada, and thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed. For kind attention and also the whole kind invitation and、uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about this work. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Professor Harada.、Mm, thank you. So later、uh, from、thank、the three o'clock. Yeah,、uh, okay. three o'clock. Okay, I'm going to uh, connect uh, at the three or the、uh, few minutes、uh, before the three. Okay. Okay. Just take a break.、Mm -hmm. I take a break. Okay. So, <laughs> I'll see you then. Yeah.、So、see you. I'm going to stop here. The, uh, the... Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.、Take、Bye.、Care. Bye. Hello.